Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, this short webinar about Beamable. I have with me our CTO, Ali, today, and he's going to take us through all the different functionality of, uh, of Beamable. So with that, uh, take it away, Ali. Awesome. Hey, guys. Uh, so just a quick uh, intro about myself. Uh, I'm Ali. I'm the CTO of uh, Beamable. We've got some really exciting stuff uh, to show you guys today. Um, some of you might know uh, Beamable is a... Um, a Unity package, uh, which we currently distribute via the Unity package manager with the intent of it being eventually on the uh, Unity asset store. But it's free. Um, it provides a uh, front end, the back end, um, everything in between, as well as a content system. So unlike sort of the uh, the other kind of backends as a service, what we're trying to provide here is something that is end to end focused much more on getting you uh, to market and getting your game out there and start collecting things, even if it's not necessarily, you know, the infinitely customizable uh, feature that you wanted. It's the feature that is best in class that matches what the big games out there are doing that is highly polished and highly skinnable so that it can be seamlessly integrated to your game. So what we have here in front of us is the Hats project. This is our little uh, dog fooding demo. And for those of you not familiar with the term dog fooding, it's basically where we implement our own functionality in our own, um, you know, sort of tech project, tech demo, uh, to ensure that uh, that things work uh, as 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 we expect. Uh, and so I'll I'll give you guys a quick overview of our tech demo, and then I'll show you how you can reproduce some of this stuff on your own. So before we even get started, I'll just show you. Uh, if you, if you, this is Unity 2019.4, so this is the LTS version, uh, which I expect most of you will be using soon or are using now. Um, you'll notice over here that there, this is the assets project, uh, the, the project hierarchy, but then there's also the packages section. And under the packages section, there's a Beamable project. Um, so if you, for those of you familiar with the package manager, you can install kinds of Unity pa packages here. Now, to be clear, you will not be able to find Beamable on the list. Uh, right away, you actually have to make a few edits to add a scoped repository, uh, and um, and 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 that'll that'll allow you to then download it and update it with ease. Um, so, without further ado, once you have the Beamable package installed, you can actually open up Window uh, Beamable Open Toolbox. So, the toolbox is this thing over here, and what this is is uh, at a high level, it's kind of the place you go to find the features that we offer that are sort of out of the box usable drag and drop interfaces that, that do what you expect. So, um, so uh, right off the bat, you can see that there's an admin flow. Admin flow is like a cheat console where you can input, um, you know, you can create custom cheats, but also there's a whole list of existing cheats you can use to interact with, uh, with the features we provide. Now, this is, this console is, is, uh, uh, invocable in editor at all times. On device, you can do a three finger swipe to invoke it. And on device, actually, for real builds, um, you can only invoke it if you're um, if you're a privileged user. And I'll get into what that means. Um, there is our currency HUD widget, our account HUD widget. These are little bits of connective tissue so that you can render currency at the top of the screen uh, or or a button, which allows you to um, um, you know allows you to invoke the account management screen. Uh, we've got uh, various common user experiences here, uh, login flow, uh, leaderboard, announcements, which is, you know, in many games you might, uh, it's called news, but it's the ability to sort of pop up uh, news on a regular basis to, uh, to your players and even include rewards and attachments, that kind of thing. An inventory flow, which includes things just like a basic inventory, um, and then, of course, a store flow. Now, there's a lot more features that are platform backend supports that are not on this list. And part of what we're trying to do is take all of the backend features we have, anything from, you know, uh, uh, A-B testing, analytics, um, you know, uh, events, all of those kinds of things, tournaments, and bring them into, you know, the Unity editor experience as drag and drop UIs um, and, uh, and, and have them be fully connected. And, more importantly, be not only be connected, but also um, integrate with content that can be deployed out of bands with client releases. So those of you who operate free to play uh, games or games as a service uh, models will know that content is king. Uh, oftentimes you have to deploy content, uh, you know, at least once a week, sometimes multiple times a week. And so being able to do that in a way that, you know, frankly is battle tested, um, you know, scales uh, and also, you um, 
you know, is easy from an authoring perspective, uh, sort of lives inside of the Unity experience is, is really important. So uh, what you can see here, so I'm going to hit the play button. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of these experiences and what they look like in our game, uh, Hats. And we called it Hats specifically because uh, because we like the idea of vanity items and um, and specifically uh, hats are an example of a great vanity item that you can sell that doesn't really alter the gameplay, but which uh, provides you out of the box functionality. Uh, so over here, we've got um, the game is loaded. Uh, I'm going to hit the account button here. Uh, this is an example of one of our account flows. So you'll see here that we've got Trapper, who's on the call with me. We've got John Radoff, our CEO, and we've got whatever, which actually this used to say Ali, as you can see, it's associated with my old email address, but I'm gonna switch this up and I'm gonna just call it, I'm gonna change my, my name to Ali, and I'm gonna change my avatar to this little ghost over here. Cool, why not? Um, and now it shows up in game, uh, it's updated. Uh, and what's nice about this is actually, you, you may have noticed these other accounts here, uh, when I sign in to other accounts, so in a situation where a device might be used by members of the same family, you can actually keep track of all the accounts right here and switch between them seamlessly. Now, if you if, if your little sister is logging on to your to your device and you don't want her to have access to your to your to your account, you might want to hit this remove button. And what that'll do is that'll actually clear the um, the user from the um, from from the list and remove any credentials. Um, I can show you that again. Uh, let me actually sign in as Trapper now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to forget my own, uh, you know, Aliyah Disruptor Beam. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, well, actually, I want to sign in with email. And I can type in AliyahDisruptorBeam.com here. This is, again, my old email address. Uh, it'll tell me you've previously linked an account to this email. Please enter your password to continue. Uh, I'm going to enter my password. And... And then what will happen is once I'm logged in, you're about to load an existing game. It prompts me, you sure? Yes. Uh, and it gets added to the list. And now, now I'm signed into this particular account. Another thing you can do is you can say, okay, actually, I want a new account. Uh, and what that'll do is that'll, that'll provision a, uh, a brand new uh, frictionless user account for, the, um, for, this, for this particular player. And, um, uh, and, and that'll, looks like we're having a couple issues here. Just, uh, Internet connectivity is a little bit uh, sketchy right now. Um, let me reopen this. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. So I've got my anonymous user account. I can rename that to whatever I want. Uh, John, Johnny Boy. Let's see. Uh, and then I'm going to set this avatar over here. Save it. And now this is another account. And as you can see, it remembers it. Um, this is our development environment, so we actually uh, break things on a fairly regular basis. This is not the experience that's delivered to our customers. One of the things that you might have noticed from our package manager is that uh, I'm currently on version 000. That's not a real version, but there are other versions available here, like the preview RC10095. Uh, that's a package that is actually published. Um, so anyway, so this is cool and all fine, but this is very much skin to our experience. And to be clear, we actually support uh, sign in with email and password, frictionless login, Facebook login, and, and uh, Apple login uh, as well. We've got Google sign in on the roadmap that should be coming soon. Um, so you, this is great and all, but like you might want this to be skinned for your game. So this is actually skin to our hats project, as you can see here, a little pixel art theme. Uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, but uh, what you might want to do actually is uh, do something where uh, you you change the skin to something that looks completely different. So um, let me pop that up again. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to the default theme. So this default theme is what actually ships with the package. Um, you might notice that uh, it's pretty vanilla. Uh, pretty pretty inoffensive. Um, you can you can then go ahead and change this as you please. Now I just want to show you guys an example of a skin that one of our customers, Puzzle Nation, has put together. So this is for their daily pop crosswords game. Uh, this is an example of how that might look different. And I actually was recently messing around with this skin, hence I put the little monkey icon up here. But the the way that the skinning works is a visual. There's a visual interface to to do so. So I'm going to show you guys the next bit of what that looks like. So I can actually go open up the theme manager here. 
And the team manager is basically just um, a layer above, uh, you know, just editing game objects and prefabs. And the reason we do it this way is so that skins are portable. So I can click on UI skinning mode here, and then I can select uh, all the different skinnable components. And then what will happen is, um, is I can I can go ahead and make changes. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to create a brand new scene here. Uh, exit skinning mode. I'm going to create a brand new scene outside of my uh, hats project. And I'm actually going to drag and drop the uh, the account flow. Uh, actually, that's the account HUD. So I'm going to drag and drop the account flow here. And there it is. And I'm going to run it. And another thing that's worth noting is that everything lazily initializes. So you know when you drag and drop something into your game, uh, all the authentication and the log and all that stuff would kind of happen seamlessly. It'll fetch the account, do what it needs to do, and you don't need to actually call any functions. We're trying to approach it very much from a no-code, low-code perspective. Um, so once this is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back into the theme manager here while this is loading. I'm going to turn on skinning mode, and then I'm going to select, for example, this developer logo. And you can see that there's a color binding and an image binding. And so the sprite is set to a monkey. And I'm going to switch this to actually be set to uh, the Puzzle Nation logo right here. And this is kind of how you go about skinning. And so you can select any skinnable element. And as you modify it in this UI, what it's actually doing behind the scenes is it's updating a scriptable object, which is effectively a theme. And so you can imagine a future where instead of even building your own theme, you could download themes for Beamable from the internet that are generic, you know, fantasy themes, sci-fi themes, and so forth and so on. Or you could create your own themes for publishing to the asset store. So this allows you to change any kind of a variety of things, uh, namely, you know, the shape of the, of the panel, the contours, shadows, all that good stuff, but in a way that is entirely portable and perhaps most importantly, in a way that will... Once you skin this in one UI, it applies to all of the other Beamable experiences. So the idea is like you skin once and it applies uh, to everything. So uh, now that I'm done here, I'm uh, done changing my, um, uh, my logo. I'm going to exit UI mode here, and I'm going to switch actually back to the, uh, to the Connor skin. And so I'm going to reopen. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to show you guys now the, uh, the, the currency and how that kind of fits, plays with content. So... You saw the account management screen. Next part is some, but account management doesn't have that much content to it, right? Like there is there is some content and the content is actually largely in the domain of uh, email password templates. So email templates. So for instance, when you go and you want to change your password or you initiate a forgot your password flow, what will happen is you'll get an email that says, hey, uh, here's a one-time password. Go ahead and input it in games so that you can, uh, you know, uh, change your password uh, for that particular account. And you can actually customize that template in Unity. And the way we do that is we're going to open up the content manager here. And this is the content manager, which keeps track of all the content that you might need uh, to power the Beamable features, but also custom content that you might want to you know, add to this list. So you can actually add your own special types of content that you can also deploy out of bands with client releases. And in this case, it'll be any kind of data, scriptable object type of thing, um, you know, you can deploy out of bands with client releases. And this actually integrates with addressables, which I'll get into uh, later. Um, so, okay, so I'll show you examples of this content. So I mentioned password update. So if I go to yield, yield inspector, uh, those of you who use Unity will be very familiar with the inspector view. What this does is actually, um, when you click on uh, on you know a particular uh, bit of content, it actually navigates you to it in the project hierarchy. So you can see the scriptable object. So you can actually just just as easily click on it here. Uh, but this offers a handy dandy sort of sorted list. Uh, and so I can click on password update. I can make some changes to this. And then when I'm ready, it actually will change the icon depending on what the state is with respect to the cloud. So for instance, uh, files that are new, meaning files that exist in my local environment but don't exist on the cloud, uh, they get this little cloud icon, those that, that with the blue icon. Those, uh, those that, are, that, are old, that, are, that have been deleted, that is that are deleted from your local environment and they don't exist in the cloud, those will have a little uh, red icon next to them. Uh, and a cloud. And then those that have been changed, that have been mutated, uh, will have a little alert sign next to them. Everything else that is like effectively in sync with what's in the cloud will have a, a green check, check mark next to it. 
So as you might notice here, I've got a bunch of stuff that is local that doesn't exist on the cloud. So I'm actually going to delete this one because I, I don't really need that piece of content. Uh, there's a couple other things in here, like um, the test store, which I recently added. Don't really want to add that. Uh, test events, sure, I'll add those. I'm going to actually delete these uh, dollars and coins because we'll cre recreate them and I'll show you what those look like. And then what I'll do is I'm going to hit publish here. Um, oh. And refresh the content. Yeah, it looks like the publish is having some issues. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, I guess it must be my internet connection that's having issues. I'm really, really experiencing some lag. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, uh, publish this latest bit of content. So I'm gonna hit the publish button. And as you can see, it just got published above. There's a little progress bar went quickly and now everything is actually green. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, so the password update has been updated. What I can do is I can actually log on to our web portal to validate this, that this content actually has been updated remotely. And the way that I can do that is actually I've got, a, uh, we've got a web portal that is also accessible in unity. Um, it's a little bit slow to load in the unity editor, just because the version of chromium that ships with unity is quite old. And in fact, in new versions, we're thinking this might this might not be in Unity anymore, just because 20, Unity 2020 doesn't support it. Um, but uh, but I'll show you what that looks like and uh, what it means to uh, to experience this both in the browser and outside of and in and, and in Unity. Um, so I can actually also click this open in external browser window, and uh, and this will load a lot faster, as you can see. Um, um, so. Yeah, but let me come back to Unity. Uh, let's get this. Okay, so there it is. It's actually in the process of loading. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click here and I'm going to say, okay, well, it's asking me to search for a DBID. It's giving me the option for some leaderboards and some content. So I did mention that we wanted to check whether our content was all here. So we actually can come in here and see what our content looks like in its sort of raw form when it's published. Uh, so for example, we were talking about password update. That's under the email section. Uh, we can click view and it'll show me what that, what that looks like right here. Um, you can download it and do what you please with it. Uh, but getting back to sort of the features that are drag and droppable. Uh, so I had this scene, which I created and I pulled in a login flow. Another thing that I want to pull in is a currency HUD widget. And so a currency HUD widget is a little thing at the top. You know, we were all familiar with them in mobile games. You render a number and some kind of an icon. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at uh, at it in the inspector and in the inspector, there's a, a content reference. So right now there's just gems, but what I can do is I can come to the content manager and say, actually, I want a new one. Uh, I want to add, you know, and you saw this earlier. Uh, I want to add, let's say, um, uh, I'm going to say rubies because I like rubies. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. Uh, well, I'm actually going to change. I'm going to click on this, uh, currency. And I'm going to set an addressable asset for it. And so for those of you who are not familiar with addressables, it's kind of the new Unity way to, uh, to, to author content, specifically your, your images, your textures, your scenes, anything that you want to ship with your, with your package. It gives you a way to sort of uh, um, uh, have soft references to those assets so that they don't need to be packaged with your, uh, with your binary, uh, which allows you to slim down your binary in the App Store. Uh, and then download those assets later. So you can define addressables that actually just live in your uh, in your Unity, uh, you know, in your Unity build. There's still advantages to doing that because there's a lot of uh, neat memory management to ensure that you're not double loading assets. So highly recommend uh, you guys check out addressables, but um, because they offer you a path to better memory management, but also uh, give you the open up a path to deploying uh, downloading assets. Uh, you know, after after the, the binary has shipped. So I'm going to select an addressable here, which is the, the, the little Ruby icon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this new um, this new bit of uh, this new Ruby. So hopefully this thing um, is faster than last time. But what I'm going to do is um, I just hit the publish button. Uh, it should pop up uh, any minute now. But what that's, that's going to do is it's going to give me the ability to uh, to publish my new rubies and then to set them actually. So I'm going to go back to so I'm going to publish this. And then there it is, green. 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to say, okay, well, actually, I want rubies now. And what I, once I hit this play button, what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to load whatever currency amount that I have, um, and then it's going to also show me uh, a particular icon associated with that um, with that um, with that uh, currency. So it's actually in the process of downloading that, um, and there it is. So it's loaded all my data. Great. I've got a little a numeric value. I've got a, a Ruby uh, icon here. What do I want now? Well, I want to give myself some rubies, right? So uh, as I mentioned, there is an admin console, which you can drag and drop. Uh, and this is where we start having fun. So I'm going to open up this admin console and I'm going to look up my, uh, my ID, my player ID. Um, and the way I do that is there's a command called dbid. And, um, and so if I hit the tilde button here, uh, it'll pull up this, um, this empty list thing. And if I type in help, it'll actually tell me all of the different commands that are currently registered. As I mentioned, you can actually easily register your own custom commands with a little attribute above your functions, and, uh, and they'll just show up magically here. Um, but that aside, I'm going to type in dbid here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that straight from my console because this, this all gets logged to the console. Uh, and it's this numeric value over here. And so I'm going to come to the portal and I'm going to look up my player, right? Uh, and once that player loads, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grant myself some currency. Um, I'm actually going to do this in the external browser since it's a lot faster. So I'm going to come over here. Here we go. I've got my, uh, my user. Uh, I'm going to add myself. This is the the, the portal. Uh, so as you can see here, um, there's a profile. There's information about your inventory, uh, leaderboards, announcements is our news feature, stats. These are user properties which you can set, uh, some of which get set automatically, uh, what purchases you've made, what cloud data you might have. Cloud data is basically client authoritative data that gets synced to our cloud. Um, and so I'm going to add myself some currency. And as you can see, I get a handy dandy drop down here gems and rubies, because the back end is aware of the, all the content, because I published it, uh, it's able to sort of give you uh, drop downs and you know, very uh, specific lists so that you don't run into the risk of, uh, uh, of, of, of putting in the wrong value. Um, and so this is really handy for player support, for developer iteration, for product managers, uh, anybody who wants a foolproof way uh, to, to update uh, and look up player information. So I just gave myself 100 rubies. Uh, now, when I come back to the game, as you can see, it's all plumbed through. It automatically updates, and uh, and I can do whatever I want with those rubies. I can uh, purchase some content or whatnot. Um, so that's the sort of basic uh, idea around the tight flow between, you know, I drag and drop a feature. I can skin it. I can customize some content that powers that feature. I can deploy that content uh, to, to the production environment. I can then view that content both in editor via dropdown selections as well as in the portal. And so you start to sort of come about a very opinionated workflow that is, uh, that is really designed to offer you all the power and make it up front clear uh, what, make it clear up front what the, what the trade-offs are, right? So like we're not claiming to give, to have sort of infinitely flexible, uh, you know, Lego sets that you have to piece together with glue code and all of that stuff. Um, you know, what we're, what we're sort of hoping to accomplish here is drag and drop features that are highly polished, that are production ready, that are, you know, built with best in class practices such that you can focus on your core differentiator and, uh, and, and you can still, while still having the benefit of, uh, of the of the sort of level of polish of these features that the top uh, top 100 grossing games on the, on the app stores and on uh, Steam and, and other platforms uh, uh, have the benefit of and, and frankly the, the the bandwidth and the capital uh, to execute on. Uh, yeah, that's great, Ali. Thanks. I mean that that's a really good picture of sort of taking us through, like you said, you know the the prefabs themselves, the ability to drag them in, skin them, interact with them via the web portal, all the different kind of capabilities of it. Um, yeah, so that's, thanks for, uh, for walking us through that. So this webinar is going to be available on our website. Um, you know, you'll be able to view it at, at any time, uh, and definitely check out, uh, everything at beamable.com. Uh, we have a list of all the features there. We have some overview decks you can download and we definitely just love to hear from everybody about, uh, about this, uh, demo, about the features and the capabilities. 
uh, yeah, and definitely reach out via Beamable.com and get in touch, and we'd be happy to find out if there are any game projects that, uh, that we can help you with. So thanks again for your, uh, your time today, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you, guys, uh, see you guys on Beamable. Awesome. Take care. Thanks. Take care, guys.